Okay, I want to talk to you in this virtual lecture about the OSI model, the basics of the OSI model. The chapter seems a little complicated with all this transport layer does this, 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 and the data link layer does this. It's not complicated if you understand the basics of the OSI model. First, the question I get almost every semester is, I understand the OSI model now, but what I don't understand is where is it? Is it in my RAM? Is it on my network card? Is it on my hard drive? No, no, no. It doesn't exist anywhere except virtually. For example, if I lay out a blueprint of a house and I say, this is my house, and then I take you to my house, you, this isn't the blueprint. This doesn't look like a blueprint. Where's the blueprint? No, the blueprint is the instructions of how I want my house built. Now I have the house, don't need the blueprint. The OSI model is this. It lists the things that need to be done to a piece of electronic information to prepare it to be sent across a network rather than just manipulated within a single computer. There are so many things that need to be done to this data to prepare it that it is divided up into seven categories, seven layers of the OSI model. So the OSI model lists what needs to be done but doesn't do it. That is correct. Who does it? The programmers that are writing network protocols will write protocols to address one or more of these seven layers so that they are arranged in the same order as the layers of the OSI model and when the data is ready to be prepared, this protocol does what it's supposed to do, the next one does what it's supposed to do, or maybe there's a protocol that does three of them and another protocol that does two of them, more than one protocol. That is why you will see in your book and other places it recalls to it refers to protocol stacks or protocol suites. I do not know of a protocol that addresses all seven layers of the OSI model. I really until somebody can come up with it and show me that I'm wrong. I don't think there is a such thing. It's always protocol stacks. So let's look at this. There are seven layers and they are numbered backwards if you're looking at it from the sender's side and they're done in order if you're on the receiver's side. Let's just go with some graphics here. A famous graphic. I got sand over here. I got the receiver over here. And of course, connected by a network. The first thing that happens, the first protocol enacted by the sender is not layer one protocol. And you'll see why as we go through this. It's the layer seven protocol. So let's do this in order. You're going to need to know these. You're going to need to know them in order. You're going to need to know what their names are. And there's several little different phrases to help you remember. Application. And there are, there are I think, more than one chart in your book to show this. Presentation. If anybody has any trouble with the presentation layer, get in touch with Travis Hicks. He's an expert on the presentation layer. So you need to know that. Session layer. Transport layer. Network layer. data link layer, physical layer. I did that without looking at the book. You can do, if you remember the phrase, 
all people seem to need data processing. That's how you do it, seven to one. If you want to do it one to seven, please do not take salesperson's advice. I learned 10 years ago not to ask the students if they had any little phrases that they had come up to with to remember this. You can keep them to yourself. I don't trust any of you. I've been embarrassed enough. But if you want to make one up to suit yourself, go right ahead. But there they are in order. The first thing that happens is the data is announced as being data to be transported across a network. There's my little data packet. Nice little cute little data packet. A Word document. The protocols that operate at the application layer put a header on that piece of information that is all the application layer instructions. When it is through, please notice as I'm drawing it, now, by default, that packet's bigger. And when it's through the presentation layer, puts a header on it with all the presentation layer information. When those protocols are through, packet's bigger. And the session layer puts a header on it. Then the transport layer now has a packet that's bigger. And it puts a header on it. And of course, it should be easy for you to notice that as we're going down through here, this data packet is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And if it was bigger to start with, it's going to be huge by the time this seven layer model group of protocols gets through with it. Yeah, it will be. But not to fear. As you study the operation of the seven layers, you're going to see that this thing is going to be chopped up eventually into literally thousands of tiny little pieces and set out on the network. So now that it's ready to go, it's two times bigger theoretically than it was to begin with and out it goes on the, on the highway, the information highway, the network. When it is received, the receiving unit says, what do I do? So it takes and strips off the header from the physical layer and complies with what needs to be done and then stops. And the protocols written for the data link layer strip off that header and complies with what needs to be done. The network layer complies with what needs to be done. Transport layer reads the header, discards it, complies, on up it goes, bang, it's back to its original, original information and the receiver has it. Now, what you are concerned with in this chapter is what is the information in these headers? What is going on here? And there's a couple of things that will probably cause you problems. And I'm just gonna address those because the book is pretty clear about what goes on in these headers. Number one, addressing is done at these two layers. This layer right here is actually divided into two sub-layers. MAC, which has nothing to do with a Macintosh computer, that stands for Media Access Control Number, and LLC, or Logical, L, L, yeah, LLC, Logical Link Control. So that physical stuff and logical stuff are coming together in data link that can speak both languages. These are the two layers where there are addresses. This layer handles the physical address. Now that's easy to remember until you get in that little room where you're taking your Network Plus exam and they start playing with words. The physical address is handled at which layer? And one of those answers is going to be the physical layer. And students knowing better because of the stress, we're going to grab that answer. It is not right. There are no addresses at the physical layer. The physical address, the one that's hardwired into your network card, is handled at layer two, the data link layer. 
a network address, your IP address or IPX address, for example, is handled at, net, at the network layer. These are the two layers that do addressing. The confusion that follows that might be with some that if the physical doesn't do the physical address, then what does it do? It codes the information for physical stuff. What kind of wire? Coax? UTP? STP? What kind of wire? Fiber? Uh, wireless? Now, if you can remember from a previous chapter, or actually probably from the beginning of this chapter, there's that 802.11 thing that's wireless, and there's that 802.3 thing that's Ethernet and token ring. That's your physical layer stuff. Other than that, you will also notice that as you come down through the layers, more stuff is happening in each layer. Other than that, the book is pretty clear. Um, as long as you understand that when it's sending, it's going 7654321 across the wire. And when it's receiving, it's 1234567. When you are asked to write this, which I won't do on an exam, but Network Plus might, you always put seven at the top. You cannot reverse orders. You cannot change the graphics. Application is never layer one, and physical is never layer seven. Basically simple once you kind of get used to the verb. Any questions? Why does the, <clears throat> excuse me, why does the physical matter? Why would a computer care if it's coming on a wire or wireless or what kind of cable? Or the computer like itself does not care, but the actual data packet itself needs to know Am I supposed to grab a hold of this token thing that's going around, or am I just going to go out there and look for a blank space in the cable, which is the difference between Ethernet and token ring, or token passing. Um, the um, unshielded twisted pair, the eight pairs of wire, handle data travel differently from a coax, which is just one little wire that has to kind of work in both directions. It's multiplex the data packet has to act differently. Think of it this way. At the data link layer and the physical layer, at the data link layer they're called frames. Data link layer they're called bits. The bits need to know I'm going to Walmart. Am I driving? Am I taking a cab? Am I taking a truck? I need to know. And that's the information is not for this computer as much as it is for the data packet so that it knows that my first stop's not gonna be this computer. And it probably isn't. It might be a switch or a router. And it needs to know that. And that's what's in that packet. Good question. Anybody else? Okay, that's basically all I have to say about this. But again, I remind you, as with my other virtual lectures, Email, telephone, Yahoo Messenger, I have voicemail, get in touch with me if you have questions, discussion board, whatever, get in touch with me if you need this to be cleared up, and uh, I'm sure that with the right conversation, we can get all your confusion cleared up. Thank you for coming, thank you for listening, that's it.